Welcome back. This is part five of Needle Felting the Elephant Shrew. Today we're going to work on painting eyes and doing the ears. This is Natasha with Spirit Animals Art. So I've been working on the first one and I think I'm going to name him Rufus because the full name to these is the giant um, elephant shrew but also they call it the black and Rufus elephant shrew. So that would be a good name. So these eyes, there's many different eyes you could use. These are glass eyes. I actually got these from Living Felt. This size is a little bit big. I think that's 12 millimeter. This is a little bit small. I think that's uh, seven, maybe five, five or seven. I had these 10 millimeter eyes that I had gotten on Etsy a while back a variety of different ones and they're glass cabochons and they have these really neat eyes taped on the back so what I decided to do is I just picked a couple pair that I didn't I didn't think I would probably use and I peeled that backing off and we're gonna make our own backing now you can order I think I got this from Etsy too it's a digital download and you can print out all different kinds of really cool eyes. So you could actually take a clear cabochon and you could pick any eye you want if it's if it's a project that has an eye that that would go with. But these little guys, they their eyes look black. So you can use black paint if you have it. If you're not a painter and you never have black paint around or you don't have any right now we have our little handy danny dandy trusty old sharpie so we're gonna do the do-it-yourself version of painted glass eyes so i just took a piece of paper and i take my sharpie i've i've taken the back off of my eye because i i just need a black eye you could actually, if you have a paper with the eyes already on it, you could just color that in however you want, but let's just assume that you don't. You just have paper and you have a Sharpie and you have a glass cabochon of the right size. So I just put a lot of marker on the paper and I went ahead and put some on the back of the cabochon too. I just want to make sure we cover all bases. And this is kind of messy, but it washes off eventually. So you just put that on there. And then you're going to glue it. You can use any kind of glue. Um, can use super glue you could use um, the Aline's tacky glue which is a new glue that I've just gotten that everybody seems to love and so I'm finding new uses for it um, you can use the e6000 I believe it's called that a lot of people use for jewelry and things so once you get that sharpie on there or paint whatever you're going to do that's when you will glue it your glue of choice e6000 is something that's used by a lot of People, uh, jewelers and people who work with clay and there's clear tacky glue you could probably use Mod Podge or school glue or just anything that's going to get that paper stuck to the glass so that it doesn't come off and you want it to be something that dries clear that's very important So it's really simple. You just put a little dot on there and I'm going to press it onto the paper 
I want to make sure I get all edges. I don't want to have just a dot. So I'll smear it around a little bit. And you could let this dry before you cut it. I just went ahead and cut it while I, it was wet. This is why you want to use a paper plate or something to protect your work surface because Sharpie gets everywhere. And I would make sure you use scissors that you don't mind not being too sharp. Um, anytime you cut paper, you don't want to use your good sharp scissors on that. I like to use these kitchen scissors because they come apart. They're very easy to sharpen. And they'll do just about anything you need them to do. And I'm not too worried about cutting this perfectly. If it has some edges around it, that's fine. We'll trim that later. And you're really not going to see it anyway when we get the fiber on. So there we go. You'll just do two eyes just like that. Let that dry. And as you see, it's a nice shiny eyeball. And I'll show you in another tutorial how I, since these caps are flat, it would look flat up against the head if you just laid it onto the surface. So I'll show you how I built up at an angle to make it look like it's round on the other side. So yeah, you can use one of these templates. You could color your own. You could just use a piece of paper if you just need a black eye simple little trick there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I felted the ears. And so you could just felt them. You want them very, very thin is the thing. They have super thin ears. You don't want them too thick. So you couldn't really take a piece of felt and cut that because that would be a little thick so we're going to make our own and i actually wet felted them that way they would be really sturdy in case i needed to cut them or anything that they wouldn't be fuzzy and they would stick together really really good so we just want wisps of fiber and you want it a light color this is um, actually a lighter color than i've used on him so I put that to the side I've decided to use the same color that I used on the tail for this which is I believe Serafina's Palomino horse coat So you just, uh, you want to trim because they're pretty long fibers. So I want to trim that in half. And I'm just mixing it up so that there's not blunt ends. Not that it's probably going to matter once you get it. And then she get it felted, but it's just good to get in the habit of doing that. So I'm laying just a nice little wisp, and I'm going to lay some one way, and then I'm going to lay some the other way, because that makes like a mesh. So I've got fiber going the one way, side to side, and then I'm going to have fiber going up and down. That makes the mesh, just helps it hold all together, because... Like I said, we're making super, super fine little ears. So this is going to act like a thin little membrane, just like the ears are. So I'm just making, this is probably about quarter size. And I just want to round it a little bit. And just beginning to form it. And if you have a punch tool, this is where it would be good to bring that out. Punch it down. If you don't have a punch tool, but you have several thin needles like 40s or 42s, you could rubber band those together and use that as your own 
handmade punch tool. And so I'm felting the top, but you see that I'm leaving the fibers at the bottom unfelted, and we're going to do that same thing when we go for the wet felting. We're not going to um, we're going to not felt the bottom so much. We're mainly going for the top because the bottom is where we're going to attach. And I have a little light, light pink. You could have, if you have a darker pink, you could mix it with some of the white to make a lighter pink. But um, I think this is Bunny Bear. B A R E, Bunny Bear, like a bear bunny <laughs> from Serafina. And I'm just putting just little wisps of that because I want it to mix in with the fiber and give it that pinkish look that their ears have. I don't need a whole lot and if I need to add some later, even after wet felting, we can do that. Just checking that they're about the same size. The one on the right is a little bit less fiber than the one on the left, so I'll add a little bit of fiber. Just get them evened out. There's our punch tool. You could forego the wet felting and just needle felt it really, really, really firm if you wanted to. But don't be afraid of wet felting if you've never done it before. It's super, super simple, especially on something this small and it does not take long at all. So I'll just show you. All right, there's one. And here's where I discovered that the one on the right is a little thinner. So I'm just gonna tack that down. Add just a tiny bit more fiber here in a minute. When it felted pretty good before we begin the wet felting. There we go. So I'm adding just a tiny bit to the back side because I added the pink on the front side, so I don't want to cover that up. So I'll add a little bit to the back. Till I'm satisfied that both ears are pretty much the same amount. I'm just showing where you could cut and I'm showing how thin they are. You want them to be really thin, so thin that you can actually see through them a little bit. And it's you once you get them felted really good, you could use scissors, but you, on these I don't end up using them. So to wet felt, all you need is a little bubble wrap, which you can get out of a package. Everybody's getting Amazon packages these days could use a little uh, shelf liner, soap, this is some really nice olive oil lavender soap, and some water, uh, some warm water. You could do this at the sink, but I decided to bring it to my table. With your soap, you want to have a little bit of oil in it, so that's why I like this olive oil soap. So you're going to use the rough side, you're going to put the rough side of the bubbles up we're going to use that to help us felt. So don't felt the bottom part, only felt the top part. The bottom is more to be used to attach. 
So I'm just going to spray the water down. Um, water bottles don't spray down very good, so I have to lift it up to get it to spray, but that's fine. I don't need a lot of water. Just get it nice and soaked. And that's warm water that I'm using. You could put the soap in the warm water if you wanted to, but I decided to just rub a little bit of the soap onto my surface and onto my ears. So it really doesn't take much. And then you just start rubbing. You, you want to rub all different ways. You're going to... Um, use the bubble wrap and then I also show how you can use the shelf liner you can use both of them or if you didn't have bu bubble wrap but you had some shelf liner you could use that just anything basically to rough it up without you know damaging or moving the fibers away from each other so something plasticky or rubbery is good for that and so you basically just keep doing that The warm water and the soap, it, it gets the fibers all tangled up with each other. And you just do it until you feel like you've got it felted as what it needs to be. And when you're at that stage, rub it a couple more times and then go rinse it in the sink and wring it out and just lay it out to dry. And don't worry too much about the shape. It doesn't need to be a perfect shape. We just want to make sure we have enough fiber there. Because like I said, when it dries, we could cut it to what we need it to be. Or what we're going to do actually is going to fold it and bend it and uh, make little wavy parts and things in it. So, Because after you have wet felted, you can still needle felt it. It's still able to be needle felted. So... The wet felting is basically just speeding up and um, really securing those fibers in. Okay, there they are. I'm going to go rinse those. And so these are some ears that I've already made. And I'm going to put these on Rufus. And I'm not sure, when I did this video, I wasn't sure how I would end up doing it, but I wanted to go ahead and film it in case I surprised myself and figured it out on the first try. I wanted to have it documented because it's going to be a couple of weeks between the next video and it would be quite easy to forget how I wanted to do it. So I'm looking at pictures and the ears are folded over at the top and so I see that so I'm going to go ahead and make that I'm at this moment I'm just testing out because I could pull it back apart if I needed to so I'm just tacking it down I'm just kind of feeling it out and just make sure whatever you do to one ear you do opposite direction to the other ear and do them at the same time that way you don't end up with one ear bigger than the other or one ear looking nicer than the other I want them to be pretty equal so I'm looking at the size I'm testing the size and looking at the picture and so I know I, I need this part to come down at an angle and then back around so I'm deciding am I going to cut it and I decide, no, I'm not going to cut it. I have enough 
of this and it's thin enough and their ears kind of have a little curliness to them it's thin enough that I can just make that using my needles a lot of this you guys is just experimenting you don't know what's gonna work until you try it and so don't be afraid to try new things if it doesn't work out so be it. it you'll do you'll do it differently but if it does work out then you've discovered a new way of doing something that is either gonna make something way easier or make it way nicer looking so that's how we make progress folks being willing to fail you have to be willing to do it wrong to get it right so I'm trying out his ear and I'm thinking that looks pretty good so let's just form it a little bit more and I have a couple of different pictures pulled up on my screen I'm looking at reference I'm looking at the front and the sides and kind of from the top that way I can see how their ears are behaving and I don't end up using the scissors but I'm just reminding again that if we were doing an animal with say pointy ears or something the scissors would definitely be used because you would want to get those sharp lines but this technique actually works really well for these ears so I'm just comparing my ears again they've got a match I can't have one teeny ear and one big ear all right I think I think I'm pretty satisfied with that And so I just form it a little more, tack it down a little more, and when I put them on, I discover that they're a little bit long, so I'm going to have to cut the bottoms off some, which is fine. I know that part is felted, but we're going to put more fiber over the top. That's why we haven't finished furring him. He still needs lots of fur. There I'm showing the ear. See how the ear is shaped on his little head? So I'm happy with that. I like that. So don't be afraid to cut your ears and things down to size, but don't be in a big hurry to do it either because you might change your mind and it's easier to take away than it is to add to something. Not that it can't be done, but what is the construction saying? Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> so first of all, you'll have to make sure that you have the right ear on the right side. And it, you see, I just tried to pull it, pull that bottom part off, but it's not going anywhere because we've wet felted it. So I'm just judging where I want it to set. I'm just poking it a couple of times to keep it in place just to make sure that's how much of it I want and when I'm satisfied then I go ahead and make the cut it's always a little nerve-wracking to do that even though I know it can be fixed goes on much better and so I'm looking at where I'm going to position and looking at the picture you put the ear at the back of the head there where it slopes down where it, it ends at the back of the skull there we go. and it's at kind of at the top in line with the top of the eye socket and the bottom of the ear comes down and is pretty even with the bottom 
of the corner of the eye. So I'm just inspecting it, taking my time, not getting in a hurry. And then I'll just get a bit of fur in a minute and I'll use that to start tacking it in. And in another video, when we start putting fur on, you'll see that you won't see where it joins to the head anymore because that fur will be covering it. Just watch out for the wire when you're working around the head, when we're putting the eyes in and putting the ears in. Just remember that you have that big wire in the head and it's going to get in your way. So remember just to use bouncy, loose bouncy stabs. I have broken one needle on this project so far, only one, and it was a thin one. I like how that's looking. So I'm looking at the colors that are going to be around his head. So I, I decided on a mix between the really red and the more brownish red. So I'm going to mix those together a little bit. And this red is, um, I'm trying to think, I think it is um, horse coat, chestnut horse coat, or it might be red fox. On Serafina's website, under the pelts section, there's horse coats and there's also animal pelts. Um, red fox and chestnut are really close. They're that real rich red color.
All right, you guys, thank you for watching. Until next time, please subscribe if you want to see more videos. We'll see you later. Thanks.